Hey over there, Joe Lunchbox. And Joy Nightingale. And today we have landed right here in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. You think Gettysburg, ah. History. Lots and lots of American history here. Civil War was right here. It's true. We're actually going to go into a building. This homestead actually was an, um, an orphanage for soldiers that died their kids back then. But it's not anymore. It's, a, it's, a, it's more of like a diorama museum, but it's a little twist to it. Should we, should we sell them or should we let it be a surprise? Um, I don't know. I'm like a little bit of both. I'm torn. Well, we'll give you a hint. We're about to go to something called Civil War Tales at the homestead. Now, mind you, that tales isn't spent T-A-L-E-S. It's spelled T-A-I-L-S. And that does look like a cat riding a horse. But let's go uh, check out this diorama museum. So step right up. Let's go for the ride. The Confederate Virginia or Merrimack. In the monitor over here, you've got your revolving turret, so she only has two guns. We can fire in any direction, you just don't want to hit the pilot house. In that direction, you damage the boilers with the concussion. So, uh, Lieutenant Green was commanding the guns, he aimed every shot himself just so nobody would get wrapped up in the excitement and <laughs> float away the pilot house or something. Are these guys also three quarters? Of an inch? Yes, these yeah. are three quarters of an inch. Virginia is still in blue uniforms because it took a while to convince. Confederate sailors to switch to gray because it's going against tradition. <laughs> All navies wear blue. <laughs> we have some holes here we can see underneath the water also. And this is a photo of this building back? Yeah, there. ours is the one on the left. Um, the photo over here is the house next door where you'll see images is. So that one was here during the battle. Belinda, um, his wife, was the first matron. Um, she ended up remarrying in 1869, and that was also the year they built this house oh. to expand it. So I don't know if she overlapped at all with it or not. Um, hmm. But you can see it, the road is off to the right there. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So our house nowadays is probably like in the yard where the kids are playing because it got moved up to the street and south a little bit. Okay. It's an addition built on. It's General Meade's headquarters. So that one's actually inspired by the brown horse pulling the ambulance. Um, the two pulling the ambulance are the only store-bought ones on that diorama. We made the other ones, but we broke his like ages ago playing with him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Once Gallop passed him, one of the horses was running on three legs because that hind leg was shot off at the hock. Mm. And so, what do you know? Saddle bro broke his leg at the hock. And it doesn't <laughs> specify which hind leg, so um, he even looks like he's running, so he inspired the diorama. Right. <laughs> Got a horse on there. there. Yeah. <laughs> cool making for Sumter because the Confederates took so many photos after the battle you can see like just what it looked like mm -hmm. yeah. afterwards. Uh, it's the morning of the second day of the bombardment. The barracks and officers quarters caught fire and there were powder magazines down in that corner with 275 barrels of gunpowder in it. So they're um, rolling barrels across the parade ground to oh, try yeah. and get them <laughs> Basically nobody got killed doing that because you still have Confederate shells exploding around you too. <laughs> I would not want to do that. No way. <laughs> Our dioramas are usually because we're reading something and it inspires a diorama. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. This one was the other way around. We wanted to do it for the 150th anniversary, but we didn't know what point in time until we read that story and we we're like, yeah, we gotta do that one. Yeah. Doing the guns off of the photos from the Confederates and also a park service diagram that tells you what type of gun is where. And so one of the photos shows this jumbled mass here. And Ruth, meanwhile, was doing the research and tripped across a story of two sergeants that got tired of firing small guns down below um, where it was safer. So mm. they snuck up the steps against orders, fired one of the 10 inch Columbiads. So it recoils, and it takes six men to run it forward again. So they fired a second time from the recoil position, which flipped that gun over, almost sent it down the stair tower, and knocked her the house next to it. And so we're like, oh, look, it's the. Oh, look what that makes the description. <laughs> The little pullouts there are the gun crews that would be in the corners of the fort. Mm -hmm. uh, we made yeah. turning 23 and a half. Oh, uh, wow. 24 next June. Wow. I was thinking, man, another year and a half, we're going to be a quarter century old. <laughs> little modeling play cats. <laughs> I think it's cool that you started doing them as yeah. the Civil Wars back then, too. Yeah. Well, we've always had cats as pets growing up. Yeah. And we realized that when we were playing outside as Robin Hood, we would always be cats and the bad guys would be dogs. And so I think that's where the whole people as cats thing came from. So it was just natural to make them and they came out as cats. 
Oh. More we're reading, more we're making. Again, the officers oh, yeah. were reading about guys for them to command and then started doing dioramas a couple years later. Wow. Um, so, yeah, it's not until like high school that people are asking us why their cats are going all <laughs> Wow. Um, putting a couple years on it. We've got a few more to go. Mm -hmm. um, we started in 2013, but that's the year we bought the house, so it's been on the back burner for, mm -hmm. for a while. But we've got the 20th meter here. Um, they're just starting the charge, the left wing's starting to swing forward. And then the 83rd Pennsylvania along there, and then the rest of Vincent's Brigade will be along the front there. Um, the road goes down the middle of the diorama to the parking area behind the crest, and this is where the New York monument that looks like a castle okay. is. Well, number three made it up under horsepower, so they'll be dropping along the crest. <laughs> and then um, Colonel O'Rourke is arriving with the 140th New York. He arrived just in time to save the, the uh, right flank from getting flanked, so... That one's probably our first to scale diorama that we did. Okay. It's the 54th Massachusetts. They were the first black regiment, um, and they're charging Battery Wagner. So that's really the first time that they saw a major battle. Two days earlier, they had been involved in a skirmish and saved the 10th Connecticut from being surrounded and captured. Uh, um, holding the flag is Sergeant William Carney. He ended up with the flag after the color bearer got wounded. And then he knelt up there on the wall, was wounded five times by the time he made it back to the field hospital after the fighting, and um, he said the dear old flag never touched the ground. He ended up mm. getting the Medal of Honor in 1900 for that. Is that the movie Glory based yeah. off? Yep. That's Bigelow's Battery down near the Charleston Farm near the wheat field. Okay. Um, I don't know if you've ever been down there and noticed the white barn with the cannonball hole in the end of its gable. That's the Charleston Farm. It's on United States Avenue now. Okay. Um, but they were, it was actually their first day of seeing action. Um, and when they um, received orders from Bigelow's you know, superior, Colonel McGilbrey, to basically sacrifice his battery if need be just to buy time so that McGilbrey could set up another battery behind him and um, keep doing that until they could get some infantry patched together because the whole third corps was crumbling so there was, as McGilbrey put it, not a single infantry man along the whole line. So on the left ended up backed up against the wall and out of space so he ordered them to Withdrawal. So the first one went through the gate, took the turn too fast, and flipped over. So that blocks that route. And so this gun, they took some rocks out of the wall and galloped their cannon across, which of course is about two tons. Um, they made it. It made a lot of noise with all the crashing, you know, rocks and wheels and everything. But they made it. Um, so orderly's horse, and then Reed heads to the rear at a walk, um, guiding both horses with one hand, steadying the glow with the other. Um, and so then they end up crossing in front of the 6th main battery, which is the next one in line that Bill mm -hmm. set up. Mm -hmm. And so an officer rides out and tells him, like, can you hurry it up a little bit? We're ready to fire. <laughs> and so Bigelow explains that they can't go any faster because of his wounds, so just fire anyway. They'll take their chances. This wall <laughs> that they're jumping over is actually still there. You can see it. The Trossel Farm is directly yeah. across the street from it. That's pretty cool. It's usually. I like the little Confederate balls here. <laughs> I mentioned how we would make officers we were reading about and guys mm -hmm. were in the command. Well, the officers multiply faster than the guys in the command. <laughs> so we had a bunch of unemployed officers. So. Here we have our only dog in the museum. Aww. He's our mascot for getting their photo taken with him. <laughs> the wagons are various examples of the dark wagons that the photographers would use. The, Union soldiers called them what is it? Mm -hmm. they, Changing the glass plates in them. So yeah, they, yeah, yeah. You can see how they have like little windows in the back, or the, mm -hmm. this one's got them on the sides, uh, just to let in a little bit of light. Because um, you'd have to you know, take and develop the photo within yeah. like, 10 or 15 minutes, or you lose it. The ship is the Housatonic. She's the first ship sunk by an enemy submarine. Confederate Hunley sank her. So that poor thing's been waiting 14 years for us to make the Hunley, and it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> But on the right side, they raised the Hunley now, so we can take a field trip and go see her. And you say it's there, it's just underneath. You yeah, there you go. <laughs> right, yeah. Technically, I think it's like in the wall, because those guys are looking at it, firing their rifles at it, so... <laughs> Couldn't find the 
I think they enjoy up there like rolling up the mess mm -hmm. themselves. I feel so kind of sorry for this guy. He looks like he's about to fall off. <laughs> Like stick your tail out for balance. Come on, cat. <laughs> we know That's how it works. I'm going to curse these shoes. I can't use my hind claws. <laughs> <laughs> so this one's Andersonville. Um, we made this one because over here, um, this is a photo of our great great grandfather Elmer. He was um, nine years old when his brother Luke died down at Andersonville. Uh, Luke's the only relative that we had that was fought in the Civil War. Um, he was in the 8th Pennsylvania Cavalry. He actually got captured twice, um, so that's why he missed the Gaysburg campaign, so he's not the Pennsylvania Monument. Um, um, so he talks about how if you had a razor on you, you could set up a barber shop complete with the carved pole to look like the barber's pole. Um, he has a painting of the type of oven that you can make out of the dirt, so you can bake bread out of your cornmeal ration. Um, you could even have sutlers, you know, trading rations or maybe hawking beer that they made out of fermented yeah. corn milk stuff. So it's just interesting thinking about how it's their own little city, so you're gonna have you know commerce developing mm -hmm. and stuff yeah. and it's not really something I ever thought about. Um, or just, you know, everyday life you're constantly tweaking your shebang and stuff to make it better and you know, just working on creature comforts like logs for pillows and stuff. It's just interesting thinking about that. Bunch of guys cooking, that's always for a pastime. And over here we've got the entrance to a tunnel, which you can actually see two guys digging out over here. Um, they're using a method that um, Sneedon describes. You'd have the one guy scooping the dirt between his legs and the guy behind him packs it into a bag or a haversack that can get pulled up. And then somebody will sneak the dirt down to the swamp area to dump it out somewhere inconspicuous of uh, the, the tunnel. But yeah, apparently you could have like 12 or 16 guys working on one tunnel. I'm like, how in the world do you keep that secret from <laughs> the prisoners around you, too? Because yeah. you don't want anybody riding you out. Guard action in Tennessee that we tripped across and just the the idea, we couldn't pass up the, the diorama idea. Mm -hmm. um, but the Confederates were evacuating Shelbyville, Tennessee, and Joe Wheeler um, was commanding the rear guard. And so he was defending Skull Camp Bridge in the hopes that General Forrest and his command could join up with them across over and also so that some of the, the wagons could cross over. Um, but the bridge ended up getting blocked in the fighting, so Wheeler's command scattered up and downstream and he and about 60 others cut their way through the Union Cavalry and jumped off a 15 to 20 foot cliff at mm -hmm. full speed. About a third of them made it across. I don't know how many didn't make it because of the river, and how many didn't make it because they got shot because mm -hmm. the Yankee star fire guy, mm -hmm. that you're, you know, swimming across and all. I like he made the horses in the water. Yeah. It's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's the first cavalry based diagram that we made all the horses for, so. We have Pickett's Charge, the base back in Gettysburg. It fascinates me how everything is scaled, but like a lot of the people were actually the real people there. And we even had a real cat at Gettysburg, right there. Hang so I have to say, walking in here, I didn't know truthfully what to expect. I knew it was dioramas where the people made the cats be the soldiers, but um. I thought it was gonna be a thing. Yeah. Like. Yeah, that was actually amazing. A weird thing, but it was actually really cool. Yeah, the fact that these two sisters have been doing this for over 23 years, and the details of these battles, it wasn't just like, oh, here's a civil war where it's the north versus south and that. That each cat actually represent people through battles and where they fell, and like, horses that legs were shot off in this battle were represented, like, it was amazing. Like, they really did Yeah, if you like research. history, this was awesome. Although, give them a little time, this, let yeah. them rebuild some more stuff. Yeah, we're talking to them in the battles that they're building next. There's a bunch coming in the next few years. The museum is only three years old. You know, the, the two sisters that did it have been doing this for 23 years, but the museum itself isn't that old, so. <laughs> Civil War Tales, <laughs> been there, done that. Remember folks, safe travels, good eats, and live life. I didn't know what to expect. I love this. I'm not a big cat person, but they helped change my mind. Awesome, oh, amazing, amazing. <laughs>